This is the Art of Network Engineering podcast. In this podcast, we'll explore tools, technologies, and talented people. We aim to bring you information that will expand your skill sets and toolbox and share the stories of fellow network engineers. Hello there, friends. It's so good to see you again. Welcome back to a fun-filled episode of The Joy of Networking. We have a wonderful little design tapestry that we're going to work through this week. Let's get right to it, okay? You see, me personally, when I'm drawing out a design, I like to start from the top. But for you fine folks following along from home, you start wherever you want because there are no wrong answers here on this show. I'm going to start with a happy little distribution switch up here. Doesn't he look so strong and robust? You know what? Let's draw him a little friend. He can have a little neighbor right next door. The symmetry is nice, and it can save us from some of that pesky downtime later. Although, I always say, there are no such things as mistakes. Just happy little outages that we get to deal with. All right, those two friendly neighbors look nice. Let's head downstream, shall we? We'll add in some access layer switches down here. Oh my, aren't those cute little buggers, aren't they? Let's connect them up to our friendly distribution switches. I'm going to pretend those are layer 3 connections so we don't have to wake up the spanning tree bear. No, we should let him hibernate. From here we can hook up some computers and even some phones because we like to talk to each other, don't we? Maybe even some access points, spreading their RF around. Wow, those APs are free little spirits, aren't they? Well, there we have it. I'm happy with mine, and I hope you're happy with yours at home, too. Can't wait to see you back next time, and stay tuned. Here comes the art of network engineering. Bye for now, friends. God. <laughs> Thank you, Tim Ross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that was... Uh, I'm going to echo some, what some of the Patreon said. That was the best intro ever. Best that- one to date, Tim. That was, you know, I'm, I'm kind <clears throat> that's of definitely uh, my favorite so far. I'm kind of upset with myself because what's, what's what the name of the show? <laughs> the art. The of the art. Oh, Thank you. And it took that long. And we oh, had, man. we also had a guest a while back from Open Gear that was an art teacher. And I even talked to him about it. And it took me this long <laughs> to come up with the idea to do that. <laughs> well, it was beautiful, Tim. It was. Time has come. Good job. That that was my favorite so far. All right. Well, he is at Tim Bertino. Tim, how are you doing tonight? That was that was just another fantastic uh, intro by Tim. Thank I appreciate you. that. I am wonderful. I am super excited for our guest this evening. I'm a huge fan, so can't wait to get into it. As am I. Andy, how are you? <laughs> ah, my central air went tonight. Other than that, I'm doing just fine. Mm. So that's not hair gel tonight? That's the sweat on your brow? Do I look a little sweaty? <laughs> Hot and sweaty. <laughs> Does I was going to say you're glowing, Andy. You're glowing. <laughs> Does anybody know what that's going to cost me tomorrow? Uh, it, not cheap, that's for sure. Just give him the card. I'm Just good, AJ. Find the parts on YouTube. Make a YouTube video out of it. <laughs> yeah, he's, sure he's having a uh, hot and sweaty window tonight. That's what he's doing. <laughs> Dan, how are you? I'm doing great, AJ. How about yourself? I'm doing very well. Very, very happy to be here. Another wonderful awesome. night uh, in my super hot box office. So. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's get to some wins, and then we'll, we'll introduce our guest and get rolling here. Uh, Andy or Tim, whoever's got a goat at the ready. Well, because you guys talked shit on me last week. <laughs> <laughs> we not totally only, did. Not only was I not on the episode for reasons, but they talked shit on me that I'm never ready with the goat. And then AJ said something like, Andy and ready. <laughs> so I got it right here, bitches. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> So there, uh, I deserve that. every bit of that. All right, I'm in our back. in our winning section tonight, we have uh, River. River is very excited. He got all of his training funded through June of next year, which is big. I, I think oh, wow. that uh, getting training funded, you know, tra- training is hopefully a part of your compensation wherever you work. So to get that funded uh, for the next year is fantastic. Hopefully, you get some good stuff in there. Uh, Ology. Congratulations, Ology. They passed their PCNSA, which is the Palo Alto Network mm. Certified Security Administrator. Congratulations, Ology. Nice. Very nice. Uh, Beltej Giri got offered a job as a desk side tech. 
tier two from NTT data in Canada. So congratulations. Mm, okay. I've, I've dealt with NTT data. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, and N Steinbush got some fantastic CSAT feedback. Do you guys call it CSAT? You guys know what CSAT is? No, I need some education. Uh, customer satisfaction. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they got some fantastic. Uh, I must never feedback. get good scores, so they don't even need to tell me. <laughs> I'm right there with you, Tim. <laughs> uh, they did some Echo How training uh, to with, with a customer, and uh, okay. they got rave reviews. So they they posted a nice screenshot of what they got uh, nice. in the in the winning channel. Uh, new Patreons in the house. Uh, let's welcome Joe and Vin. Thank you so much for uh, your yes. support Thank you. of the art hey, network oh. engineering. Nice, Andy. Can I please yes. get another one? <laughs> He's quick Look on that ready, one. I He's like, <laughs> yeah. with the trigger. I love it. All right. I am uh, very pleased to welcome our guest to the show this evening. Uh, probably somebody who needs no introduction and has done far more on video stuff than we ever have. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Tom Hollingsworth, thank you so much. Thanks for the invitation. I appreciate the opportunity to come on and chat with you guys, even with a screaming goat. <laughs> <laughs> Our, have our you ever had one of those says, in your interviews before? <laughs> I can honestly say that no, I have never had a screaming goat. Yes. <laughs> I think we're going to see one on Tech Field Day sometime soon. Maybe. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so Tom is uh, CCIE 29 to 13, and he is the face of Tech Field Day. Hopefully you're watching Tech Field Day. There are many events going on throughout the year. Uh, what's, what's going on right now? I, I feel like I saw something about a storage field day or. Yeah, we, uh, we just got done with our 22nd edition of storage field day. Uh, we wrapped up last week. We had some great presentations from, uh, Intel and comprise and, and peer storage. And then we've got a uh, couple more weeks and then we're going to be diving right into, uh, we've got something going on with Nginx, uh, with around their sprint, uh, event. We've got another tech field day coming up. And then of course my, biggest thing uh networking field day will be going on uh, uh mid-september uh we we have a great lineup of presenters and delegates as a matter of fact um there may even be one of them looking at you right now <laughs> yes i have actually saved the announcement i haven't announced it on twitter or anything i have been invited to the next networking field day and i will be there i'm so hey, excited hey, awesome, this is dude. uh my, my second one, I, I'm so excited to, to finally get back. Tom has actually invited me to a couple throughout this year, but I've been way too busy with work. And so when he hit me up a few weeks ago, I blocked out my calendar and I said, no, I'm not missing another one. So nice. super excited to be here for, for Network Field Day. It's one of the um, things we've actually found over the, the course of the last year with them being virtual is, is your boss is like, oh, well, you're already at home anyway. Can you like do both of these <laughs> things at once? Can you like be the face of your community and also try to fix the spanning tree problem at the same time. Yeah. And they <laughs> right, just don't right. quite get how much work goes into doing tech field day. Nope. Nope. It's crazy. If they only understood that, you know, that the life of, uh, of, a content creator, I guess you should say, right. Mm -hmm. The yeah. troubles we have. Um, so Tom, a lot of people in our audience are kind of rookies to it. They're, they're just kind of getting their foot in the door. So could we take a step back and kind of explain, what is Tech Field Day? Sure, because uh, sometimes we, we get all kinds of really crazy um, descriptions of what we do. And it's, it's kind of amusing to hear people describe it back to us. Um, but the easiest way to think about it is you've probably found yourself in a room sometime with someone who wants to present something to you. Um, usually these take the form of sales pitches. I mean, we've all mm -hmm. been in that presentation before where they think, say things like rate of return and, you know, gross margin. And we're all IT practitioners. And quite honestly, we don't care. Uh, we just want to see <laughs> things that work, hopefully. Yeah. And so years ago, uh, the founder of the company, Stephen Foskett, he was getting together with a few of his friends uh, across a whole bunch of IT disciplines. And they're like, what if we could do an event where like we got all the really cool technical presentations and we get to ask lots of questions and there was no BS involved in all of it. And like everyone's like, oh yeah, that'd be great if someone would put together an event like that. Steven actually got up out, walked out of the room and put together the first event on the spot. <laughs> Called a couple of his friends. He's like, hey, I want to do this thing. And they're like, okay, cool. How many months do we have? He's like, uh, one, we're, we're doing it next month. And so it's kind of evolved from just like this general IT kind of, you know, melting pot to now what we have is, is events that are very focused around technologies, because it turns out 
why just talk about a little bit of storage and a little bit of like data center and cloud when you could just spend three whole days talking about networking? And so that's where we're at now. So you, we get a, a few of the companies that are in the space, you know, the, the Cisco's and the Juniper's. And we say, OK, you have two hours to talk to us about stuff that you're doing, you know, uh, you know, technologies that you're building, equipment that you're releasing. But this isn't a sales pitch. Nobody's signing a PO at the end of it. We want you to bring us the really nerdy people. You know, yeah. like, well, they're not media trained. They may something say something you're not supposed to. Perfect. I want that person because they're going to tell me the truth. And so that's what we get. But the idea is, is that unlike a webinar, like the audience gets to ask questions back. And that's actually one of the things that sets Field Day apart. And I know this because I've been in the audience with like traditional professional analysts and they're all like sitting there scribbling notes and they're wondering when the bar opens and our <laughs> delegates, our people that come to field day are in the back of the corner, like asking really good questions about, you know, well, how do you see this working or how do you propose that that should, should go? And I always just beam with pride when that happens. I'm like, those are the people that I brought, not the Gartner guys. <laughs> those are my people. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so that's, that's field day in a nutshell. Sometimes people are like, oh, you guys are like Shark Tank. And I'm like, mm, not really, because we're not rich. And uh, we, we actually don't want to like ruin you in, in public for, for everybody to just kind of point and laugh at. Uh, no, it's, it's more, we're trying to get people to tell better stories because, sure. you know, they're, mm. they have this idea of, oh, well, this is what people want to hear. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> Practitioners want to hear, here's what you plug in. Here's the demo to show how it works. And then you won't have to mess with it anymore. And we're like, okay, sold. We'll take 20. Exactly. So, so now you're, you're kind of the face of, of all tech field days. And so how did you, how did you get into that role? I mean, that's a, that's a pretty awesome role in my opinion. Well, so I was a delegate. Um, I've been involved with field day now for over 10 years. Uh, first I was on, so for those of you, uh, the, the, the terminology difference, we call the people who come to the event, like the people who sit in the room around the table delegates, because they're really kind of standing for the people in the community. Um, I would love to have a 600 person table, uh, gets a little chaotic. And, and then, you know, if everybody's eating potato chips, nobody can hear what's going on. Uh, but really like, you know, like AJ stands in for the people in his community. And so like, they're like, Hey, I, I really want you to ask this question of the, the really smart guy in the room. And so that's where I was. And, and I had just, you know, I was on Twitter and I was writing a blog and, and I got a, a DM from Stephen Foskett and he said, Hey, do you want to come to this event? And I actually, I remember I was driving, I almost drove off the road because I was like, um, I need to fill out the form right now before he figures out that he invited the wrong person. And, and so I showed up and I went to a couple of events and it was really cool. And I loved it. Cause like I live in Oklahoma, uh, there's like not very much tech around here. I mean, there is, but like, it's a kind of a small community. And so like, I'm flying to Silicon Valley and I'm getting to meet people like the CTO of a company. This is awesome. And so that went on for probably, I'd say about two years. Like I was, just, you know, going to events. And the funny thing is, is that the more I went to the events, the more people knew my face, the more people knew my face, the more they invited me to other things. And eventually my boss kind of was like, well, you can't go to everything this year. Like, like you can go to field day and you can go to Cisco live. Cause that's your thing, but you can't go to all this other stuff. And I'm like, well, crap, I really wanted to go to all of these things. So in, you know, typical network engineer fashion, I was whining to Steven. I was like, God, this sucks. I really want to do all this stuff and I can't. And he goes, you know, have you ever considered becoming the dread pirate Roberts? I think you'd make an excellent dread pirate Roberts. And I kid you not, that was my job offer. So I flew out to networking oh, field day incredible. and we had a nice long talk. <laughs> And he goes, so I want to hire you. And I said, um, okay. And so he did. And uh, I started in 2013. And I basically went from being the senior network engineer for a reseller to a video editor that got to book hotel rooms. So it was a little <laughs> bit of a career whiplash. But as, as my role grew and as the event series grew, it basically turned into, well, Tom, you know networking and wireless and security really well. And Steven knows cloud and storage and AI really well. So we're just going to kind of do our own thing in those areas. And so that's kind of what it is now is like I do all of the really exciting, cool stuff when data moves around. And he does all the boring stuff where data goes to die. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm sorry. I, all, all I heard is that you were a senior network engineer at a reseller and now you're here. And now I'm just, well, I'm a senior network engineer. No, <laughs> ah, enough yeah. about my career path. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to gloss over that 
Tom, because we've got a lot of people in the community that make career changes. Mm -hmm. So to go from that heads down, highly technical senior network engineer role to doing something completely different, how was that scary? Oh, absolutely. It was it was not only scary because I was completely changing my job role. Like like I wasn't going from like being the storage guy to the networking guy. It would be like I'm going right. from being the network engineer to like barber college. Um, and the other thing is, is like, <laughs> my youngest son was a month old at that point. In fact, the reason why I started oh, in June was because my son came a little bit early in May. So like my wife is like, <clears throat> so you're leaving the job that you've had for the last 10 years to go work for this random dude and get on a plane all the time. And I'm like, <laughs> it's going to be great, honey. <laughs> but, but yeah, like, and, and there were days, like, I won't, I won't lie to you. The first six months, like every time I had to call a hotel and yell at them because they misspelled our name on the contract or something, I was like, can I just, can I go tweak spanning tree again? Like I, I kind of miss that. And now like I would have to scale off like years of keyboard rust if I actually had to go deploy something again. And, and when you make a career change, it is the scariest thing because yeah. you're leaving something that you're really, really good at to do something that you may not succeed at. It's like anybody who ever goes to a startup feels the same way. And there are some people who uh, I believe it was uh, uh, the guy who founded Godfather's Pizza. I watched a management video. He's like, there are people who have risk factors, people with a risk factor of zero well, like they don't even go outside because they're afraid they're going to get hit by like falling space debris. They're just completely mm. risk averse. People with a risk factor of one will jump out of an airplane and hope they find a parachute on the way down. I'm not quite to one. I'm a little more than zero. <laughs> but but there, you know, there are times when you, you, you're, you keep asking yourself, am I doing the right thing? And the way that I've always kind of judged that was if you feel like you've hit your your limit where you're at then it's probably time for you to look to move elsewhere. And and the in the winning section, you know, someone's like, well, I got all my training paid for through June of next year. That's awesome because that's the kind of thing that keeps you involved and engaged in what you do. It's that moment when you kind of feel like you're rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic that you really need to examine <laughs> what you're doing. And, and that's how bar life for me felt for a while. It was like, I'm deploying another network that is never going to get used. Great. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So it, you got your CCIE. Was that when you were doing the networking thing or after you started doing tech field day? <laughs> no, that was that was one of the things. So um, I I didn't know when I started out in networking. Actually, I didn't even start out in networking. I was a Novell engineer. Um, hmm. I, I, I can I can repair e directory with the best of them, but as <laughs> as the thing changed and we realized we really needed more expertise over there, I really just jumped right in with both feet and a couple of hands and started doing Cisco stuff. And then they're like, "Oh, we need you to go deploy these phone systems. We need you to work on wireless." And that's how it is at a small bar. You become the guy. Uh -huh. And after a while, I started looking at it. You know, because the CCIE is like the holy grail. It's like you you're the best in the world. But it's so hard. And I remember one of my mentors kind of looked at me. We were having lunch one day and I asked him, like, this is the first serious time I ever said this. I said, hey, Wes, I, I, I think I'm probably going to try to get the CCIE. And he's just this slow talking Southern guy. And he goes, well, if you keep your head screwed on straight, I think you can do it. <laughs> and so that was all the encouragement I needed. But then I did manage to fail the test six times before I passed it. So, you know, wow. there's that. Yeah, I was a glutton for punishment. <laughs> and so which uh, which CCIE do you have? Uh, I have a route switch because that yeah, is the one that has the most uh, training material for it. And I was one of those people. I was like, all right, I got route switch and then I'm going to go do something else. And then I saw what happens when you try to do the voice CCIE, which is the greatest thing ever, because like when you're doing route switch, like your head is down and like you're, you're trying to get all the routing protocols to work and you're looking for those little gotchas with like redistribution and stuff. And then you're about four and a half hours into the lab right after lunch and you hear, yes. And you realize <laughs> that someone finally got the dial plan working for the first time. And they've only got three <laughs> hours left to finish the rest oh, of God. deploying everything. And you're like, I do not want to do that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh, that's great. Boy. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's so, a nightmare sound though. We, mm -hmm. we, we've talked to a few other CCIEs. When you took yours, was this during the, the two-day CCIE exam? Oh, no. Or was this now? 
No, I okay. missed out on the on the vaunted <laughs> two days of wrapping gum wrappers around Cat Five cable troubleshooting. Or like, <laughs> yeah. quick, you have thirty seconds to finish. The, Proctor told me like he was like, I have thirty seconds to finish, and everything is last up in my labs. But I wrote the config that worked. So he just walked over to the rack and went click 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 click, click and rebooted all of his routers. And when they came back, everything was working. He's like, okay, good, I passed. No, I did. Uh, so I did one day. So I the first couple of attempts were before the troubleshooting section was added. In fact, uh, I was one of the very first people that had to take the open ended questions and oh. they pissed me off something fierce mm. uh, because the third attempt, I actually failed because of them because they would not clarify something. So like, I walked up with a book and I'm like, okay, it tells me that I need to create a virtual link between these two routers and it's asking what information is exchanged. Are they talking about between the two routers or in general? And the proctor just looked at me with like the, the most stone cold face and said, I'm not allowed to answer any questions about those questions. And so like <laughs> I muttered curse words going all the way back to my cubicle. But the problem is like, like that is the moment where you're like, if I do everything right from this point forward and I screwed those up, I don't pass. And I didn't. And I got so mad. Like I took a year off. I'm like, I'm done with this crap. And I didn't go back until they got rid of the OEQs. And mm -hmm. and then it was the troubleshooting section, which was a whole different nightmare of, of amusement. And so that was three more attempts of, of getting my face bashed in by uh, difficult problems. But no, I, I managed to avoid the whole two day um, lab fun. How long did it take you all told? to get your IE? Uh, let's see here. I think I went to Narbix boot camp the first time in 08 and I passed in 11. So you figure probably two and a half, three years, something like that. Nice. Okay. So why, why'd you keep going back? Uh, Cause I'm a glutton for punishment. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love well, it. well, part of it is, is that I knew I could pass. Like, like there's, there's yeah. a difference between like, I, cause I've, I've seen this before. One of my old coworkers told me like he was taking the Novell certified directory engineer exam, which was a 100% pass rate. For a practical exam, like you had to get every question right and you, and you wouldn't. Oh, wow. And he walked in and sat down at the keyboard and looked at the screen and his mind just went and he forgot everything. And he just got up and left. Wow. He goes, I'm done. <laughs> Thanks. And so <laughs> like those are the moments when you, you really question if you're going to be good at what you do. But every time I went into the lab, like I was this close, like at no, I, maybe except for the first attempt where I just got completely shell shocked. I was close every time, like, like in my second group, like I would pass troubleshooting and fail the lab. And then the next time I went, I would do the opposite. I would fail troubleshooting and pass the lab. And so I'm like, if I could just combine both of those together, I would pass. And so the last time I was kind of discouraged and I was like, you know, I told my manager, I'm like, I don't know if I could do this or not. And he goes, well, you're going to have to, because I'm going to schedule you and you're going to go back in two months. I'm like, uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks boss. Yeah. Yeah. Did it nice. change your life getting the CCIE? Uh, if I felt relief, my wife was yeah. extremely happy that I wasn't labbing every night. Um, yeah, it was it was kind of funny. And the other thing that kind of cracked me up was that from from like the day before I passed to the day after I passed, I was really no smarter than I was. But suddenly, having five little numbers after your name makes you an expert on everything. And we, we got into a situation where I was actually, I was, I put together a design for a company or a school district in Arkansas. And I got an email back from the, the, the guy, cause we'd been working with him. He goes, well, um, this guy says that you're wrong. And I'm like, what? No, no, no. I verified this design. I know that it works. And he goes, well, he's a CCIE and he says that he knows better. I'm like, well, I'm a CCIE too. So let's cut the crap. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, good point. So like, like that immediately nullified it. And it's like, okay, so let's debate it. And it turns out I actually was right. So I was, you know, a little feather in my cap, ooh. but it was, it was more like if I had, if I didn't have a CCIE, like suddenly that's like the card that you pull. It's like the, the Uno uh, re reverse draw four card. It's like, uh, I win. <laughs> No, you don't. Like that's not a thing. <laughs> wow. Jeez. Did you get more money? Uh, yeah, I did actually, but okay. I had to negotiate that up front. I was like, okay, so yeah. if I pass this, I'm gonna get a raise, and they're like, yeah. And then I had to go in and remind them. But it was funny because the <laughs> owner of the company, when I first started, I mean, he's just like, he reminds me of the dad from Tommy Boy. Like he just walks in and he bullshits his way through everything. Well, when he hired me, he said, son. I'm going to put a quarter of a million dollars into training you to be the best engineer in the state. I'm like, okay, cool. 
Well, then when I passed, I added it up and I think I spent a little over 20 grand of the company's money trying to get my CCI between boot camps and travel and lab attempts and all oh, that boy. other stuff. So I asked him after I passed, I said, hey, uh, Floyd, <laughs> do you think you got your money's worth out of me yet? And he said, damn it, boy, I felt like another put another kid through college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, i would ask him gosh. for the difference there yeah yeah uh, <laughs> in hindsight i probably should have but all, one of the yeah. ccis who worked for a different company like that was his thing every three or four years he'd go out and like kind of shop around and see what kind of offer he could get and then he would take it back to the company and be like well if you don't pay me this i'm going to leave and because they were a silver partner and they needed two ies on staff um mm. they they would kind of cave to it i guess but then they came yeah. and asked me what it would cost for me to jump and I gave them a random number. They're like, we'll keep that in mind. But just be aware that if he tries to get more money out of us, we may give you a call. Okay. Like, oh, thanks, I think. Did you ever get that call? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, oh, okay. Actually, right after that was when I left to go to field day. Um, and it's oh, funny, okay. after I went to field day and started like being involved in all these videos, people stopped calling me about jobs. I mean, I get the occasional yeah. LinkedIn recruiter, but evidently I'm deliriously happy where I work and nobody mm. thinks they can pay me enough to for me to leave. Well, there you go. Yeah, I mean, are you? Um, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah I, I, I get to do podcasts all the time and I get to yell at people yeah. about their mics not being right. And yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's actually it's really good because I get to do a lot of really cool uh, discussions with people about technology and stuff like that. And it it's uh someone because someone asked me well you're not technical anymore i'm like oh I, oh I kind of am but i'm not like i'm not like engineering technical like i could probably design a network if i had to but i'm an architect now because i have to understand how all these pieces and parts fit, to, fit together sure. and the best thing is is that when someone gets on there and tries to feed me a line of crap and i'm like that's not how that works <laughs> And they're like, uh, you sunk my battleship. <laughs> Damn it. How do you know that? Yeah. D4 hit. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. And, and, and it gets better when you just let them kind of set their own like hook. And you're like, so you told yeah. me that you're using this routing protocol to do that. But why didn't you just use like ISIS? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'll be here all week. <laughs> oh gosh. So, I Tom, I, I know you've told this story probably hundreds plus times before, but I'm going to ask you to tell it again. <laughs> There's this thing that's been going around for years now that's called Tom's Corner. Ah. What what is Tom's Corner? What does it mean to you and what does it become? Uh so yes, this is probably one of the things that everybody knows me about. So it actually, ironically enough, happened the year that I got my CCIE. Okay. I, uh, I'd been going to Cisco live for like three or four years by this point. And I knew some people, but I didn't know a lot of people. And I'd been on Twitter for a little while. And so I flew in early. Like normally I didn't fly until like Sunday, but for whatever reason, I flew in like Saturday morning. And I remember specifically, it was like Jeff Fry and Tony Matke and a couple of the people that I knew from Twitter that I was like, hey, let, let's hang out. And some of them had like those tectorial all day lab things, but I didn't. And so I'm like, well, why don't I just go hang out? Like, I just want to go find a spot and sit down and just say, hey, come find me. I want to meet people. And so I did. And it was right outside of the registration desk. And so like a bunch of people came over like, oh, hey, it's you. Oh, hey, it's you. And, and that kind of thing. And it, that lasted all day on Saturday. And then Sunday, wow. I was like, well, I don't have anything else to do. And so more <laughs> people started coming. And, and I didn't think anything about it. And then the funny thing is, is like, I think it was Monday when like the whole event like starts happening and everything. Somebody was sitting at that table. Like, like, I guess they had their laptop out and they were doing work. And one of the people who'd been hanging out over the weekend came up and goes, what are you doing? I'm, I'm sitting here answering emails. You can't sit here. That's Tom's corner. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God. No, I'm a, thing. <laughs> I'm a meme. And, and that's what happened was like we all crowd because people would say, hey, where are you hanging out? And they're like, oh, we're hanging out down at Tom's corner. And people knew where that was. Uh, and so, so then cool. that was cool. And then the next year, Cisco's like, well, what if we like gave you a corner? Like, what if we may said that there was like a sign here for Tom's wow. corner? And I'm like, you would do that? 
really? <laughs> and so it just, it grew from there. And like, I, I, it feels weird now when I hear other people talking about it. There's, it's, there's this story I actually told it at WLPC last year. Um, Steven went to AWS reInvent. And like that thing's enormous. It's like 55, 60,000 people. It takes place all up and down the strip. And he was talking oh, to Corey wow. Quinn, uh, Quinny Pig on Twitter, who, by the way, is absolutely mm-hmm. hilarious. But uh, he was like, hey, where's where's the community? And Corey is like, well, you know, we're the community, Stephen. It's, it's, it's us. It's people. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. I know that. Where do you guys hang out when you're here? He goes, what do you mean? Like, do you, do you have like a lounge or something? And some random person looks at him and goes, oh, you mean like Tom's Corner? It'd be awesome if we had one of those. And he told me this story on, on a call. I'd be just like, oh, God, really? No, no. Um, but to me, Tom's Corner is like the power of community. It's the power of people to say, we want to do something cool together. And we're just going to do it. Because like, you know, VMware at VMworld has like their hang space. And I've been to other places where they kind of have like an area for you to hang out. But we didn't have that. We had really uncomfortable furniture. And we're like, well, we're going to plant our flag. In fact, at one point, it was a four-square check-in location. Like, I was like, okay. Uh, it's like, <laughs> we're going to hang out here. And and that's the thing I've always told people. Tom's Corner isn't a place. Tom's Corner is where we are at. So if Tom's Corner has moved to, like, uh, I don't know, like, Rera in Vegas, so be it. Because that's where we're at. Do you have so, a uh, Tom's Corner Discord server? <laughs> no, I don't have time to mon- to do that. Um, uh, and, and so to, to kind of that um, in 2020, like we were putting together all these plans to have like, because we're back in Vegas and it's like, OK, well, we're going to do all this cool stuff. And then COVID. And it's like, mm-hmm. well, damn, what are we going to do? And so I started talking to Stephen, and I was like, could we do it over Zoom? Yeah, I think we could do that. So like I, I was like, you know, it's probably just going to be like, three or four of us hanging out like it is at the corner and at one point we had like 30 people on the zoom call mm-hmm. oh wow. and people kept rolling like i i wasted a whole monday doing this <laughs> i say wasted but like well steven thought i wasted it because i didn't get anything done because i was on zoom all day <laughs> but it was great because it, it depends it, on who you ask yeah it was like here are all my friends and i can't see them because we're locked down but i can mm-hmm. see them and so this year would have been the 10th anniversary. And of course, it didn't happen. So we're having a blowout bash whenever it finally goes back to Vegas. We are like bringing in the most comfortable chairs that you can find. We're going to have banners and streamers and confetti. I just committed to a whole bunch of stuff I'm going to have to buy. So I'm probably going to be a part of Galaxy from now until next June. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I, I plan on being there. So I definitely want to have that experience. I've never yeah. been before. So, and And that's the other thing about the corner is it's so great to to feel people who have like they're coming in for the first time and you've seen them at other events like they're in that that orbit outside they're like looking in they're like is this a cool place can i, can I come in here <laughs> and, and we're all like who are you come here come see us and the one that that blew blows my mind is denise fishburn so fish mm. is like she's brilliant for one thing but she's she's part of cisco and I remember like uh, hearing the story. She was intimidated by us. Like she didn't want to hang out because she's like, they're going to think I'm a fake. They're going to think I'm a fraud. And oh, it, wow. actually it, Amy Arnold, uh, Amy engineer on Twitter uh, mm-hmm. was like, yeah. no, 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 C- come on. You can meet them. They'll, they'll think you're cool. And of course she comes in <laughs> and we're talking to her and I mean, she's really awesome and we love her to death. And then she became a part of the community. And and to this day, if I see fish anywhere, she runs up and gives me a great big hug. And she she's like, I missed you. I haven't seen you in forever. And she tells me, she's like, you guys extended a hand of friendship to me and made me like get over my imposter syndrome. And I'm like, but that's oh, what wow. we do. Everybody yeah. is here We're we, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a CCNA or just like if you're going to take your CCNA or if you have like five CCIEs you're all the same in our eyes. You're a human being that loves networking and loves to talk about stuff and loves to tell stories. This is your place. That's awesome. I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. Cause I, I going to Cisco live, I feel super nervous because it's like, am I going to fit in? <laughs> you know, like, am I, am <laughs> yeah. I going to know enough? So you, you saying that really like that helps me. So I, I appreciate that. I, I so was once the introverted shy network engineer too. So I completely know how <laughs> I that <got> feels. <laughs> 
so, so Tom, you touched on imposter syndrome and, um, you know, I, I don't want to spoil any secrets for, I, I guess it's not a secret cause you have a YouTube video about it, but, um, you uh-huh. give a really great speech on like the first day of any, you know, tech field day event, at least the one that I was a part of, right. Um, hmm. where you tell us to drop our imposter syndrome at the door. Can, can you just kind of like, you know, you've been in that seat as a delegate and now you're up here leading the group. Can you elaborate a little bit on that feeling of imposter syndrome and, and um, you know, how to get rid of it? Yeah. If you have yeah. any suggestions. I find it funny that that most of the people that I know suffer from imposter syndrome. And even if they won't admit it out loud, they do. It's that, that you know, and we all know what it is. That's that nagging feeling that I, I don't deserve to be here. Um, mm-hmm. And it took me a long time to realize that even the delegates that we invite to field day have that same feeling. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized what they need is somebody to just kind of tell them, no, you deserve to be here. And that's the thing. Um, the process to be a tech field day delegate is not something that happens willy nilly. So like, for example, you know, when AJ submitted his information, like we checked him out, like you know, we, we hired the FBI to tail him for a few months. Um, I talked to his grandma several times. That She's a wonderful that person. Van. <laughs> but like, you know, we go through your Twitter, we go through your blog, your LinkedIn. Basically, we're not like we're not interviewing you as much as we want to say we want to get a feeling for who you are. You know, are you a knowledgeable technical person? I mean, that's pretty easy to figure out. Um, do you feel like you'd be a good fit around other people? Because we've met some very smart people who just don't get along with other people and that's okay, but that's not who we are. And so by the time we've reached out to you and said, Hey, thanks for filling out the forum or, Hey, we noticed that you really like to write a lot about networking and stuff. Have you considered becoming a field day delegate? We get a really good feeling that you would be a good person to fit in there. Now, of course, immediately. And I, there have been several people when we've DM'd them and said, Hey, are you, would you be considered, consider becoming a field day delegate? The first response we get is, are you sure you have the right guy? (laughs) <laughs> uh, <laughs> are you sure you didn't mean the other john and yeah yeah we do but but that that feeling never really goes away and so the the speech that i give and in the youtube video is kind of the abbreviated version of it is you deserve to be here because even if you don't believe it we believe it mm-hmm. there are no accidents like we, like nobody blunders into the room like it's spinal tap you know like hello cleveland you're here because you deserve to be here. And if you don't believe it, then believe that I believe it and trust me. And if you don't trust me, well, then we're going to have other problems throughout the rest of the week. But to me, it, and and I, I use the word insult when I say this, but it really doesn't mean this. To, to say that you don't deserve to be here kind of calls my judgment and your, like your boss's judgment into question. Mm. Not so much as like, you know, I can't believe you'd say that to me, but like, let us believe in you. And sometimes that's all people need to hear. And and when I did this at Security Field Day, there were a couple of female delegates in the audience. Uh, one of them, Zoe Rose, is someone I actually met at Cisco Live. And she told me in private, she goes, that's exactly what I needed to hear. Like, like even though I know that I deserve to be here, hearing somebody else reinforce that decision is exactly what I needed to hear. And from that point forward, it mattered. And in fact, I actually used that speech this year when I did a Boy Scout training thing Um for the staff members. And when it was over with, a lot of them said the same thing. They're like, oh my God, you told me exactly what I needed to hear today. And I'm like, but that to me is the essence of imposter syndrome. And ironically enough, the people who don't feel imposter syndrome are usually the ones that don't deserve to be there in the first place. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I can tell you sitting there in that room and, and when you look around and see other people, you know, other people that you know from, you know, Twitter or, you know, you follow their blogs and, Uh, you know, for me, I I think it was Amy engineer. Like I've read a lot of her stuff. I used a lot of her solutions and suggestions from her blog posts. And and in fact, it was her blog that kind of inspired me to start my blog. It was like, you know, she's had these really cool experiences that she shares with the world. I think I've had some really cool experiences that I want to share with the world. So when I finally got to meet her, I was like, I'm in the same room. Like I don't, I I should help myself out here like that. And and when you gave that speech, it's like, Oh, oh, okay. And it took a little bit for me to work up the nerve to ask my first question. But after that, it was like a huge relief. And I felt so much better about being there. So a fun point about that is that my second networking field day, maybe I think it might've been networking field day two or three, forget which one it was. Um, I was actually in the room with Greg Farrow, Ethan Banks and Yvonne Pepelniak. 
starstruck is not wow. even the word that I would use <laughs> to describe this. Like I am suddenly the dumbest person in this room and I'm deliriously happy about it. Well, we got through two days of field day. Like, you know, my brain was in a blender and I remember we, cause we used to end the, the, the second day of field day on Friday at the same Italian place in San Jose that is closed now. And I really wish it wasn't, but I remember going up to Steven at the table and I said, Steven, thank you very much for inviting me to this event. Once again, you let me meet my heroes in networking. And he looked at me, he said, well, now you're someone's hero in networking. And I was just like, whoa. <laughs> and I was like, holy crap, he's right. Because somewhere out there is somebody who's been reading my blog and following my ramblings on Twitter. And they're like, I really want to meet Tom. And that kind of like shed a little bit of the imposter syndrome because as much <laughs> fanboying as I did for Yvonne and, and Ethan, now suddenly I was going to have to deal with that for somebody else. And you're like, well, how do you do that? And you're like, I'm going to pick them up and I'm going to tell them that they're awesome. And I used to be where you're at. And one of these days you'll be where I'm at and someone else will be where you're at. Full circle. That's awesome. Yeah. The cycle just keeps happening. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, AJ, what year was that that you went? Because I remember briefly that you were talking about how nervous you were there at, at uh, Tech Field Day. Yeah, that was uh, 2019, the fall of 2019. 20, okay, yeah, yep. so that makes sense then, yeah. Because yep. I remember, uh, th now that was before we started this whole thing. Um, right. Because I, I think we were messaging each other in on Instagram or something like that at that point. Yeah. And yeah. I remember you talking about that. And yeah. Yeah. I, so it, it's nice to hear Tom say what he said now about, you know, leave that shit at the door, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> come in here. We're asking real questions, you know, forget who's smarter, you know, don't, don't feel like, you know, you ask a dumb question type thing. Right. Uh, and, and something else that, you know, Tom hit on there was, you know, they, you know, they picked you, right. They didn't just allow anybody to come in. So they're, you got to trust their judgment as well. So right. that's, it's, right. it's good to hear that. Absolutely. So uh, what is the process to become a delegate? Because we do have a lot of people in our following that have their own, you know, blogs or podcasts, they create content, and I'm sure they would love to know how to get to be a part of Tech Field Day. Well, the easiest thing to do is head to techfieldday.com. And uh, when you go on the homepage, there is a little menu bar and one of them says delegates. And then uh, one of the drop downs says become a field day delegate. And you just have to fill out a little bit of information. Um, but when we when we look through the delegate selection process, there's three things that we are really critical on. You have to be independent, which means you really can't work for a vendor. Um, as much as I would love to have people from Cisco in the room when Juniper's presenting, um, that tends to set off a little bit of that <laughs> thing going on. Um, and it's not even because you couldn't be objective. Like like Amy is a perfect example. She works for Fortinet now. She's still the same Amy that I've known for years, and she's still objective. The problem is, is that anybody who's a Fortinet competitor is going to go, well, she's obviously going to have an ax to grind. And so yeah. I'm like, you know what? OK, fine. So you have to be independent now that you can work for a reseller like I did, because you're not beholden to one vendor. You're beholden to all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, you can be an independent uh, an analyst. You can be a practitioner that works like at a medical company. You just can't work for somebody that makes gear that sells them to other people. You okay. have to be technical. And I'm not saying you have to be a CCIE or a CWNE or anything like that, but you kind of have to know how the stuff works because we don't walk in with like the 101, how does a frame become a packet kind of conversations. It's more like, okay, you're not a journalist, so I don't have to explain how routing protocols work. Let's move on to the exciting stuff. So, and we've, we've taken people who are fresh out of like, you know, I've just gotten my CCNA and I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do next to, you know, like. Terry Slattery, who quite literally wrote the book on the CCIE. It's like we can take all kinds. And that's an exciting kind of dichotomy, um, because remember, you may be just starting out and be really good at things now, but eventually you'll reach that point. And just think of all the networking that you haven't had to unlearn along the way. And then the third thing is you have to have a platform of some kind. And this is usually where things get tripped up for some people because they're like, oh, um, so I have a Twitter. It's like, okay, cool. Do you have a blog? Do you have a place where you write? Um, some people make YouTube videos. Uh, 
one of these days I'm going to get my kids to explain how TikTok works and then we'll figure that one out. <laughs> but, but I don't, I don't have... know if network engineers have moved to TikTok just yet. <laughs> I don't know. They're, they're but... usually trying to keep it up and running, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you have to have a way to reach people because it's not enough yeah. for this company to come in and go, well, here is this grand new exciting thing that we're doing. I want to hear what you have to say about it because we've had some people that have like, oh, well, you know, that's kind of neat. And, and maybe you could look at maybe doing it like this. We've had some delegates who'd be like, this is the dumbest idea I've ever seen. And here's 14 reasons why. Mm. Um, both of those are valid viewpoints. One of them gets me a few more emails than the other. But ultimately, <laughs> when I go back to the company, they're like, well, why did AJ say mean things about us? I'm like, were they lies? Were they factually untrue? Well, I mean, no. I mean, he, he, he raises some valid points. Well, maybe you should address the points instead of telling me that AJ's being mean to you. I like it. <laughs> AJ, go be mean to him. <laughs> Get him. Is there a lot of that that people just complain like, oh, they're being mean. They said bad, you know, bad things about my my solution. Well, the, and that's the thing. Like, that's my job. I basically get to be the go between because uh, having been an analyst, kind of, because that's my my uh, think of it like my Bruce Wayne job. Um, when I when I'm not like putting together field days. Um, I, I talk to people all the time. In fact, I think I got like five PR emails today, but PR people are really weird. Like the, the good ones are, are great. They're, they're friends of mine. I'm like, Hey, I want to let you know this company that I'm started working for is doing this really cool thing. And maybe we can get a briefing, but like the ones who are like, you know, I hesitate to use the word blood suckers, but blood suckers. <laughs> uh, they're like, Hey, we're going to give you a really cool briefing with this really important person in the company. I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. And then I listen to the briefing and I'm like, not really my wheelhouse. And then I get like an email every week for the next two months. Hey, are you going to write oh, about boy. this? Hey, are you going to cover this? Hey, I just want to look, see if you have any questions. And I'm like, <laughs> you don't have a thing. And so my job is to stand between those companies because at field day, the companies don't tell me who gets to be in the audience because I've had that a lot. We're like, Oh, we really want this professional analyst to be in the room. I'm like, no, he's not a good person. He doesn't write well. Um, I don't want you to have to pay $10,000 to read his report. And so they don't get to say, well, you know, AJ is a mean person and he doesn't get to be here. I'm like, mm, AJ is coming. If you don't want to show up, that's your problem. But likewise, the delegates don't get to come to me and go, okay, well, I love Cisco and I love Juniper, but please don't invite Ford on that. I'm like, mm, they're going to be there. You can skip this one and go to the next one. So, so there's that kind of, because th that's one of the things that actually happens if, if you're putting one of these things together for a company is if anybody says anything negative about you and they flew you out there and put you up at the hotel and like bought you steak all night, they actually kind of have the hooks in to go, yeah, if you could just take out the part where you say that it looks like the CEO probably got hit in the face with a baseball bat, we'd really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, but but it's true. They're like, yeah, you're gonna need to take that out, or we're gonna we're gonna be mean about it. I get to stand in the way and go. He does look like he got hit in the face with a baseball bat. Actually, that's <laughs> not true. I, I I keep the personal stuff out of it. But like, if a company comes in and they're like, well, this is a really cool technology, and they're like, no, it's not. No, in fact, we actually had a blog post that went out that was title of company is shit. That was the <laughs> oh, title God. of the blog post that happened right before I started here. And oh it's like, um, like the phone call was just epic. It's oh like, uh, so he wrote this. We're like, yep. <laughs> oh my God. Well, what do you think about it? He's got some good points. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you get him to change the title? Nope. Well, why not? I didn't pay him to write it. Did you? Well, no. Then it's his opinion and I can't change that. I usually warn the people. I'm like, if you're going to write the title of a blog post that says company is garbage, will you at least give me a heads up when you post it? Because I'm going to have to put on my asbestos underwear when I answer my email in the morning. <laughs> but, but the way that I've always countered it is if he's factually incorrect or it looks like he's just grinding an ax, cool. We'll have that discussion. But yeah. if the points he brings up are completely valid and it's basically the I sunk my battleship problem, don't argue with me about making him take the post down fix the perception problem that you've got mm -hmm. mm. that's a good way of looking at it uh just real quick was it greg no <laughs> no it was not greg but i i have gotten those emails before where they're like yeah, okay, is barrow gonna be so. in the audience and i'm like yeah Ooh. 
we might be out (laughs) well let's be fair greg's done this enough that he has no qualms about telling people exactly what he thinks now that's good and bad i mean i've seen greg come in and go this is the greatest thing i've seen in like five years to fix this problem and i'm like wow who are you pod person and what did you do with pharaoh <laughs> yeah, um, right. but but there are times and 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 believe it or not uh, there are delegates that are actually that have been worse than that like they'll just flat out be like you are an idiot and i'm like oh wow oh wow um we're gonna have right. a talk <laughs> <laughs> just like grab them by the back of the head and like yeah can we, can we yeah. have five minutes together please <laughs> yeah <laughs> kick them out <laughs> oh my gosh Hey, everybody was so nice uh, during the network field day I was at. I, this is all shocking to hear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, I, the, the funny thing is, is the people who kind of have that that aggressive mentality, they kind of select themselves out after a while. They're like, yeah. uh, you know, oh, I don't want to go sit through another boring group of presentations. I'm like, OK, cool. We'll catch up later. Yeah. <laughs> so what what are some of the things that you guys cover there? Um, it. I hear a lot about like Cisco, Juniper, yada, hmm. yada, that it, what, what are some other things? Like, do you cover like more software stuff, AWS cloud stuff? Like what, what are some of the things you cover? It, it's funny because we get people asking us this all the time. They're like you guys need to have like the all flash storage field day. And we're like, mm, no, we're going to have storage field day. And if you guys want to talk about your all flash array, that's great. But we are not going to have something that we're slicing that thin. Like SD WAN field day was the one that everybody wanted us to do. Like you need to do SD WAN field day. And I'm like, I don't want seven companies in there talking about the same stuff. You got to break that up somehow. And so like we, we cover like security. Uh, So we talk about, you know, sometimes it can be like software, like, you know, password identity management, or it could just be firewalls. Uh, we talk about mobility. So it used to be wireless, but you know, then everyone's like, well, we don't make access points. I'm like, there's more to wireless than access points. But like in there now we're talking about things like uh, CBRS, private LTE. Uh, we're talking about 5G. Um, so it's, it's kind of morphing into more of like a, a connectivity field day almost. Um, Steven started an AI field day, but not like, you know, that pie in oh, the sky. We're that. putting AI in everything. It's applied AI. So it's like, no, we're really doing this. We're really building a thing that works this thing this way and so it's kind of neat to see it we you know we have cloud events where we like and the the great thing is is like the cloud people that we invite are like aws engineers that live in Mm. kubernetes all day long and they'll have a company come in and go well we have a cloud controller okay (laughs) this is not going to end well for you (laughs) (laughs) and and that is my job sometimes i have to convince people not to do this dumb thing you're about to do in fact, we were talking about it this week, and and there have been a couple of times when I, because we have like a full pre-briefing with companies, and we'll tell them, don't do that. That's a bad idea. It will not work the way you think it will. And they're like, oh, okay, we're going to do it anyway. And then it's like there's a little counter like right up here that just increments. And then when we get on the call afterwards, they're like, that thing you told us not to do didn't work so well. I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> do you see the counter? Tom is right again. <laughs> but but it's it's we've seen this work so many times or not work as the case may be that we're that we're really good at kind of pushing off and going that's not gonna work yeah and so like yeah. we we try to because we want good presentations we do not want the first three weeks of american idol where you only watch for the train wrecks we want <laughs> eight or nine really good presentations that you can all walk away from it i'm i'm so glad that i tuned in or flew out for this because the worst thing in the world for me would be to have somebody come back and go, this was a complete waste of my time. And everyone in here is dumber for having attended. I award you no points and may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> uh, and I don't ever want to come back because that would crush me. I'd be like, oh, really? Ouch. Excellent. Uh, I want to uh, flip to our chat here for a second. One of our patrons asked, so you're not really in like uh, a technical engineering mm-hmm. deployment role anymore. Do you miss it? Sometimes. Yeah. Um, usually when I'm fighting with my cable company, cause my modem doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you don't usually get to start off the support call with, hi, I'm a CCIE and I know more, more about networking than you do. Can you please forward me to the person who speaks my language? Uh, but yeah, there are times when like, like, especially when I see like a really cool demo and my mind starts spinning with, Oh, here are all the cool things that I can do with that. And then I kind of have to go, but wait a minute, you don't do this anymore. <laughs> um, but, but the flip side of that is, is like, if I got a phone call tomorrow that a friend of mine was like, you know, Hey, I need you to come out and fix my wireless controller or help me deploy this, you know, SSID thing. 
I'm going to have to like bone up on how to make it work before I even get out there. Cause I'm like, okay, do I use the console cable or can I use no telnet? No, we still don't, we don't do telnet anymore. What do we do now? <laughs> and so like, like, yeah, there are times when I'm really like, you know, getting hands on with something. I'm like, I can type again. I can do command line. And then I realize nobody does that anymore. It's all APIs. <laughs> Yeah. Do you ever get a chance to to lab or, or engage with the solutions that you guys are presenting? Mm, every once in a while, someone will give me lab access to something. Uh, oh, I remember it was uh, Big Switch Networks before they got bought by uh, Arista. Um, they gave us a lab environment one time at their office and they said the magic words, go ahead and try to break it. Um, <laughs> we didn't break it on camera, but we got close. Because it turns out that when you give 12 or 13 people the opportunity to do something really devious, we're going to outthink your deviousness. Um, and uh, I believe it was Aaron Conaway who figured out that they use the same password for all the instances and they found the master instance. And they're like, all I got to do is type this command and it just wipes everything out. And I remember Ooh. Kyle uh, Forster was sitting in the corner and you could just see like the color drain out of his face when he realized <laughs> oh crap <laughs> fix that <laughs> that's nice fantastic is it was that some kind of like challenge or something like what i think what, what they were we, trying to what prove we attend is, those at well they, they were wanting to show that that you could create an immutable setup and that no matter what oh, you okay. did you couldn't break it uh, the other one was actually uh extreme networks is the inheritor of all of the spb functionality uh that avaya developed um, and I, for those of you who are older, you probably remember the the great war between SPB and Trill. And it was like Game of Thrones type stuff. Actually, no, it wasn't because nobody won. The XLAN won. But um, we were in an SPB presentation from uh, from Extreme, and they're like, "No, really, we want you to try to hack this." And Kevin Myers, I remember he got was it, it wasn't Team Viewer, but it was something similar. And he had like an entire Slack channel trying to hack this. Yes, I remember. Yeah, this was during uh, yeah. yeah the one that I was at. That's right. And the only thing okay. that saved them was they ran out of time because they actually figured <laughs> out that they were about to figure they were going to insert a fake bridge into SPB and be able to control it. And I remember the guy who was giving the first part of the presentation walked over and was looking at the laptop that Kevin was on, and I saw his eyes just go. <laughs> <laughs> and after the stream went off he goes just so you know you would have broken it and we're fixing that right now because like <laughs> nice. they were like you know we you know spb can't be broken and it it almost happened and you know obviously you're gonna need a little bit more than that but i i love the fact that it was just like okay i'm gonna get everybody in the community working on this problem at once do your damnedest to break it and they're like yeah okay <laughs> Wow, That's that cool. guy's uh, poker face is not too great. Huh? Oh, no, no, it wasn't because I was actually looking at the video and I know the exact moment when he figured out what was going on because it was just like, yeah, you're holding aces, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> nice. That's that, that sounds like a lot of fun, though. I I would like to be a part of something like that one, one of these days. Oh, my yeah. gosh. You got to well, sign up, Dan. The, the good yeah. news is, is that we're always looking for more great people to join the community because the funny thing about Field Day is, is that it kind of raises your profile and we actually have kind of this running gag that if this is your first field day event, the odds are good you're going to change jobs within the next six months, either because you're going to find a better wow. one or your company is going to be like, we can no longer afford to pay this person. So <laughs> it suddenly becomes like a thing where you're changing jobs or you're going to work for a vendor. So guess what happens after that? I need more people to stand in for those folks. <laughs> and yeah, so like th see. there's always like I, I I jokingly call it the minor league system because you know everyone's like, oh well, I want the New York Yankees group. And I'm like, I would rather have like a couple of double A players and a couple of triple A players that are ready to move up because they they have a new fresh perspective on things. They're not old and jaded and grizzled like the rest of us. And so that gives me it's always giving new fresh perspectives to the event of, you know, well, this is a person who doesn't really use Twitter, but they're more on YouTube. And these are the study groups that they were in. And, you know, they don't need to know how ADSL dialer groups work. So with field day being traditionally an in-person event, how difficult was it for you and the team to take that virtual? <laughs> um, I was at RSA 2020 and uh, I got a text message from a friend of mine that said, hey, did you hear about this thing that's going on in China? Somebody said there was a case in San Francisco. And I'm like, ah, it'll blow over. Uh, 
yeah, don't ever trust me when it comes to predictions. <laughs> but we had an event three weeks after that. And the the two weeks between RSA and the next Tech Field Day event was when everything went ballistic and got locked down. And so the good news is the format doesn't really change a whole lot. And all we had to do was replace the big U-shaped table in the room with Zoom. Um, now, there mm. were some quibbles trying to figure that out. And w one of the things that we pride ourselves on at Field Day is we're always changing the way that we do stuff. We're always adding something new. We're always adding additional stuff. So like, it took us a while to realize that part of the thing that we didn't get a chance to capture was that just sitting around the bar with the companies, just like talking about solutions and kind of having this, this candid off camera discussion. So we added that after every presentation. So when we get done, we shut off the cameras, then we go into a room for like half an hour and we're like, okay, now that the cameras aren't rolling, let me tell you what I really think. <laughs> um, but, but that was something that was missing at, at first. And so, and then we realized that, you know, at field day, we're always moving and, and jumping around and doing stuff. So like we would have a two hour presentation at the hotel, then we'd get in the limo and we drive over to like, you know, some office over on first street in San Jose. So we get up and move, but you don't get that when you're on zoom. Like I literally am pinned to this chair the whole day. And so it's like, at the end of the day, you, you're, you're dead. And so we were like, no, 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 we've got to scale back. We can't do four or two hour presentations in a day. People need time to rest. And so it took us a little bit of while to, to dial that in. But now, you know, we're good at it, obviously, but we're starting to look at the possibility of what does it look like when we go back in person. So for Storage Field Day, we actually had a presenter present with an in-person camera crew in a hotel in, I believe it's in San Jose. And so like the presenters there and the camera crews there, we're still on Zoom, but it's like, okay, now it's starting to feel kind of like normal again. And so hopefully by the end of the year, maybe we can have an event where there's like a few delegates in the room mm -hmm. and a few presenters in the room. We'll still be virtual. And I know that with the way that things are going, you know, a lot of presenters have moved out of Silicon Valley. They're not local anymore. So it's like, well, we really want this dude to present. And it's like, well, it's going to have to be over Zoom because that person is not going to fly out here anymore. And our travel budgets are kind of crazy. So excellent. Well, we are uh, coming down on our hour. So I, I got to ask, um, can you share any insights on to the, the next event? Um, yes, there are a lot of really excited companies that want to talk to um, the delegates. Um, we have every every company who's confirmed to be there is listed on the website right now. Um, you know, I, I personally am excited to see kind of what Juniper has been cooking up. I have some friends mm -hmm. at Juniper who've actually been kind of telling me, Hey, this is going to be really cool. You're going to want to watch it. Um, you know, it's been a while since we've talked to Kentuck, uh, Avi Friedman, if you've never talked to him in person, he's just one of those dudes that I want to sit around and have a beer for like five hours and hear all of the stories and, and he gets to present. And that's the best part mm -hmm. is like these people are the people like I would love to tell you, hear you talk all the time and you're going to tell me something really cool about your company even better. So, <laughs> so yeah, so that's, you know, we're, we're working through those things. Uh, we've got a couple of other companies that are on the list. Um, the easiest way to do this is just head over to techfieldday.com and click on the link for networking field day. And then as we get the companies kind of slotted into where they're going to be presenting, um, then you'll see a lot more tweets and stuff coming out about that. And then I'll probably do a video like the week before talking about some of the cool stuff that, that we're going to see. But the other exciting thing is, is that you can also see who the delegates are. So when we've, we've emailed them or like, Hey, we really want you to come. And they're like, Oh yeah. It's like the price is right thing where they're running down the aisle and they're so excited to be talking to me. Um, then we'll list them on the website and then, uh, you know, you'll, you'll see some faces that you've seen before, like, like Murray down there, but there's going to be some new faces in the crowd too. And that's, that's the nice thing is that you get to meet people and you get to create those connections and they're your friends. That's yeah, awesome. absolutely. Shout out to one of our supporters uh, and one of our, our absolutely biggest supporters and a Patreon, uh, Gerard. Gerard is a new delegate this year. And, oh, uh, nice. He's going to be at uh, NFT 26. Super excited. That's to, awesome. To have yes, him and we're very excited. And I'll tell you that when I emailed Gerard and I asked him to be a delegate, the response I got is actually one of the things that just makes me kind of happy inside. It's like, oh my God, you picked me. It's so exciting. I want to come. And I'm like, if I ever not get that, like, like it's old hats, like, yeah, I'll come. It's a thing. To do that <laughs> that, that's when I know that we've kind of lost the edge, but as long as we're still getting really cool responses, like AJ's and Gerard's I'm in until the end of time. That's awesome. awesome. So that's so what cool. I heard all the way here in the press. <laughs> yeah. All right. He's, he's, he wasn't like, ah! sure what that noise was. <laughs> that's awesome. That is so cool. 
All right, I'm glad Tom. that we have two people in our community that are that are. Oh yeah, I, and I wouldn't be surprised awesome. if we see more at some point. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, that that's the thing about me. I'm always taking notes. You you might see one or two more before it's all said and done with. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Tom, where can people find you? All right. So the easy. So it depends on whether or not you want to see Bruce Wayne me or Batman me. If you want to see Bruce <laughs> Wayne me, uh, go to techfieldday.com and go to gestaltit.com. And yes, that's a German word, but we don't speak German around here. It's g e s t a l t i t dot com. So that's where I do a lot of like my day job work, where I take briefings and I I do a weekly news podcast. And I actually just finished recording another episode of my conversations where I compare Wi-Fi six e to IPv six and. I'm waiting for both of those camps to like, you know, stab me to death. Uh, but when I'm not writing professionally, I'm being a snarky jackass on my own website at networkingnerd.net <laughs> and on Twitter at networking nerd. Um, it's better than it used to be. Like I've, I've kind of mellowed with age. I'm no longer character assassinating people in the comments. Um, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> But like that's sometimes I'll just come up with a blog post and be like, this is the dumbest technology I've ever heard of, which, by the way, if you're wanting to sponsor my event, please disregard that and send me a check. <laughs> yeah. nice. That's a fine line to walk there. Uh, it, it is. Yeah, that, that's, that's got to be. And sometimes I have to feel like the adult in the room where everyone's like, oh, we're going to like we're going to burn them with pitchforks and torches because their demo wasn't live. And I'm like, how many times do you think I've seen a demo that wasn't live or that was live screw up in a unique and different way? I told them to do this. Please. Torches down for at least another 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. That's fantastic. So you can look for the next networking field day, September 14th through the 16th. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be there. Gerard will be there and a lot of other cool people and uh, OEMs as well. And I'm looking forward to it very much. Thank you so much for the invite, Tom. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. This has been fantastic. Yeah. Incredible. Thank you, Tom. Thank thank you. you Tom. Awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you so much out there for listening. And we'll see you next week on the next episode of the art of network. Engineering. See you later. Hey everyone, this is AJ. If you like what you heard today, then make sure you subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcatcher. Smash that bell icon to get notified of all of our future episodes. Also, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We are at Art of Net Eng. That's Art of N E T E N G. You can also find us on the web at Art of Network Engineering.com, where we post all of our show notes. You can read blog articles from the co hosts and guests and also a lot more news and info from the networking world. Thanks for listening.